Hi, Nick here. Um, it's uh, the end of April and Adrian and Vanessa have been on the farm for about two weeks. Adrian, I think you, the last time, when you left the last time, I think we were just busy with the Cabernet, yeah. um, harvesting yeah. the Cabernet and actually, you know, now we're, uh, we're all pressed out. So everything's going through Malolactic and uh, the wines are looking great. Oh, fantastic. What's, what's the, I was just down in the um, cellar and there's a bit of pressing action going on, but one of the questions I, I wanted to get an answer to is, what's the difference when you press Bordeaux varietals against, say, Rhone varietals? Well, you know, Tay's got some footage a while back and uh, maybe he can show us. Uh, in the background, you can see uh, we're busy with the basket press. We're busy pressing uh, some Cabernet Franc today, but it's been a busy month with pressing. So. Basically what I do is uh, leading up to the pressing after fermentation, uh, myself and Jürgen taste through the wines on a daily basis. So what we do is we, uh, once, a, once the, the, the wine is dry, uh, we leave it on the skins to post macerate. This can be anything from a few days up to a month. And we taste the wine on a daily basis to see how the tannins are tasting, how the tannins are polymerizing. And what we're basically looking for is a sweet spot where we get lovely velvetiness and silkiness um, on the wines. And when we've had that, we decide to press. What we do is we, in the afternoon, we will drain the wine um, basically from the skins and then let the wine drip and drain overnight. The next morning, we put it into this press in the background here. And basically what it is, it's a basket press. The reason why we have two presses at Oldenburg, we've got a pneumatic press and a basket press, is that the basket press is much softer and gentler on, uh, on the skins, and the quality of press shoes that we get is so much better. So the press cycle takes about an hour and a half, and it's almost like a giant percolator, where you press the skins down and the juice runs out the bottom. It's also very important that myself and Jürgen are here during the pressing process, because we taste the press fraction um, every few um, minutes, and then we do what you call a press cut. We decide when to cut the press juice. When the juice or when the wine starts becoming too bitter um, and too phenolic, we will basically separate that juice and that becomes our, our press fraction. Uh, we separate it from our, from our free run juice. Um, the process takes about an hour and we've got two pressing cycles. On our Bordeaux varieties, we use a pressing cycle which is just a straight pressing cycle where basically this um, plunger moves down and squeezes the wine out of the, out of the skins. And then uh, with the Syrah, where we do a fraction of whole bunch pressing, we use another press cycle, which presses a little bit harder because of course we've got all those whole bunches uh, with whole berries, and you need quite a bit of pressure to break that. So what we'll do is we'll do a pressing cycle, we'll then lift up the press in the background again, um, go in with a fork, loosen everything up again, and then do another pressing cycle. And in that way we break the berries and we get all the free run, um, free run released. From here, after pressing, uh, the wine will go into tank, we'll settle it overnight, just so the worst sediment settles out, and then from there it will go into barrel for malolactic fermentation. Well, I'll tell you what, all this uh, talk about uh, pressing and free run juice and whatever has made me a bit thirsty, so oh. yeah, well, <laughs> we have a bottle of our uh, 2020 Grenache um, uh, Grenache Noir from um, Bush Vines. We're about to release it. Um, so tell me a bit more about this one. Yeah, this video is situated basically just behind us on Ronde Corp, so on a southeasterly slope. Mm -hmm. And as you know, um, it can get very windy at the top of Ronde Corp. So we've actually planted it to a bush vine. And then we've got these big granite boulders leaning against every vine, basically just to keep it up. But it's a, it's a small production. I mean, I only do some years four barrels, some years six barrels right, of yeah. the Grenache. Um, and uh, you know, I make it in quite a light style. So this is, uh, is the second year that I've changed the style of the Grenache. I think you know, some of, our, some of our, um, our, our, our wine lovers know the Grenache used to be quite a, a slightly more heavier, slightly more Chateau Neuf de Pop type of style. And um, you know, I just decided when I arrived here that I wanted to make something slightly lighter you know, in our portfolio and being a great fan of, of Grenache and also a big fan of Pinot Noir, I went for slightly a lighter extraction. So we did about a third whole bunch on it. So you can see the, the, the color is slightly lighter. That's very light, um, yeah. and, uh, and a natural fermentation. Um, the alcohol was 12.8%. So this is a great wow. wine. I mean, for a, for a slightly chilled for a summer evening. Um, and you know, on the nose, that lovely, lovely, you're getting a lot of floralness. I'm getting lavender, but I'm also getting violets um, on the wine. 
and red currant strawberry oh, and on the palate just a lovely freshness a nice acidity you know just a really really elegant wine and a mm. great wine for some lighter dishes i mean i can see myself you know drinking this wine on slightly chilled um and just having a nice little piece of salmon with it you know it will, it will stand up to a nice big piece of fish um but it's also a wine that you can drink on its own you know it's a it's it's a, it's a, it's it's a great variety it's great no it's really i love the color it's fantastic yeah well no this is light i mean this is this is maybe we should have had this for our breakfast wine last month it could have definitely yeah. worked there yeah no, no this, you know. this with some cornflakes <laughs> Well, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's um, obviously a very small production and um, yeah, there's not many bottles of this, but it's uh, worth definitely getting your hands on some. Yeah, I remember when we, yeah. when we released the 2019, I think it was sold out within six months. It went right. really quickly yeah. and for a long time, you know, we didn't have any Grenache on the market. We still sat on some 16, which we, uh, which we pushed through the tasting room and everybody was loving that style. Yeah. But it's good to bring back this lighter style. Yeah. Um, I yeah. think, you know, people are really appreciating it. And uh, it just shows, you know, what, what Grenache can do on a cooler slope. It's normally a variety which is planted on a much hot, warmer hot. slope. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's really interesting. And, and uh, I mean, it really shows what Stellenbosch can do with Grenache. No, fantastic. Well, this is, uh, this is really wonderful. Fantastic. Well, cheers. Cheers. Look forward to uh, drinking a bottle or two of this. Yeah, good having you back. <laughs> Cheers.